I am an active duty member of the United States Air Force, and I will no longer be complicit in genocide. That's Aaron Bushnell, wearing his U.S. Air Force combat uniform, live streaming on Twitch on February 25th. In his hand, a stainless steel water bottle, as he tells viewers he's about to engage in an extreme act of protest. But compared to what people have been experiencing in Palestine at the hands of their colonizers, it's not extreme at all. This call, we just got a man on fire. A few seconds later, Bushnell doused himself with the liquid from the bottle and set himself on fire outside the front gate of the Israeli embassy in Washington, D.C. As the flames consumed him, Bushnell screamed, Free Palestine! over and over, before finally falling silent. U.S. Secret Service officers and D.C. firefighters put him out with a fire extinguisher about a minute later. EMTs rushed Bushnell to the hospital, but he died from his self-inflicted wounds. Bushnell was a 25-year-old from Whitman, Massachusetts. He was a cyber defense operations specialist stationed at Joint Base San Antonio. His LinkedIn account says that Bushnell was an aspiring software engineer who was pursuing a bachelor's degree in software engineering. He grew up in a strict religious community on Cape Cod known as the Community of Jesus, which the Independent reported has posted pro-Israeli content on X. Elsewhere, CBS News likened it to a, quote, Christian cult. Bushnell had been on active duty since 2020 and apparently joined the military as a last resort due to financial problems brought on by the COVID-19 pandemic. The Intercept determined the Reddit account with the handle AceBush1 belonged to Bushnell. Throughout the last few years, he posted on the account about his regret in joining the military. I'm sticking it out to the end of my contract, as I didn't realize what a huge mistake it was until I was more than halfway through, and I only have a year left at this point. However, it is a regret I will carry the rest of my life. Bushnell's posts also show an ever-increasing pro-Palestinian stance. Bushnell's self-immolation was a means to protest the Israel-Hamas war, which began on October 7, 2023. According to the Israeli government, the Palestinian terrorist organization Hamas killed more than 1,200 Israelis and took around 250 hostages. In retaliation, Israel invaded Gaza, and the city's health ministry said it has resulted in more than 29,000 Palestinian civilian deaths, the majority of which were women and children. Other countries, including South Africa, have accused Israel of genocide, which Israel has strenuously denied. This is what our ruling class has decided will be normal. A day before he took his own life, Bushnell told a friend he was privy to top-secret information and alleged the U.S. had sent combat troops into Gaza to fight Hamas. Bushnell's unnamed friend told the New York Post, One of the things he told me is that coming across his desk was the U.S. military was involved in the genocides going on in Palestine. He told me that we had troops on the ground, you know, that were there and were killing large numbers of Palestinians. The Post was unable to verify the information Bushnell told their source. Bushnell's self-immolation wasn't the first related to the Israel-Hamas war. In December 2023, a person set themselves on fire in front of the Israeli consulate in Atlanta, Georgia. Authorities released no information on the protester who was listed in critical condition. Police found a Palestinian flag nearby. There is a long history of self-immolation as a political statement. One of the most well-known occurred in 1963, when a Buddhist monk in Vietnam set himself on fire to protest the mistreatment of his fellow monks by the U.S.-backed South Vietnamese government. Temple University history professor Ralph Young told Time magazine, It's an act of despair. You feel that there's nothing that you can do, or that people are willing to do. So this is the ultimate sacrifice. Yourself. If you or someone you know is struggling or in crisis, help is available. Call or text 988 or chat 988lifeline.org.